gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. Francis uh, took time out from his busy day to s celebrate an actress named Dorothy Day, who actually created the Catholic, Catholic Workers Union, which was a communist front group, by the way. Catholic Workers Union? How does that differ from any of the other radical left-wing groups that are undermining America like bull weevils? Why would he single her out? Why would he single out a Catholic who gave his life for the country in Afghanistan or Iraq, meaning a Navy SEAL or a soldier or a Marine or an airman? Why did he bring up Dorothy Day? Because she's a progressive communist. Sorry, I was raised by this nation and, and educated, by the way, by very good liberals to stand up to authority. I was educated to stand up to authority and speak out against hypocrisy when it comes from the top. And I don't care what vestment it wears. I've walked out of synagogues. I've walked out of churches. I've walked out of Buddhist temples. I cannot take liars. Am I perfect? No. But I don't pretend to be a religious leader. And I will tell you, this is a very bad day for religion. Not a good day for religion. I don't care about the mass hysteria. This mass hysteria is frightening. But what would you expect from a nation of drug addicts, TV addicts, sports addicts? What would you expect from a nation that worships losers? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Savage Nation. This morning I woke up and I said my prayers, as I always do, and I decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to do this. As simple as that. Uh, that's the code I've always lived by. If you do the right things for the right reasons, the right things will happen. Like a little boy, he said his prayers, and if you do the right thing, the right things will happen. Maybe they'll happen for you when you get your payout, but they're not happening for America, John. We know that. But if you want to believe John Boehner and the Pope, go ahead. It's a free country. Cheryl Shumley writes for WND. She's a fabulous columnist. She's really one of the best. There's a lot of good people at World Net Daily. Cheryl caught what I said this week. Savage to Catholics, save us from this Pope's agenda. Urges faithful to reject insanity of his communistic principles. Here's what she wrote. Nationally known, top-ranked radio host Michael Savage sent out a not-so-subtle appeal to Catholics, urging them to save us from the communist agenda touted by Pope Francis. As the Pope arrived for his first visit in the United States, Savage told his listeners it's tragic, quote, to see a pope arise out of nowhere who espouses the very communistic principles that the church opposed, close quote. He was, he was referring to the pope's promotion of the climate change agenda and of state control to solve inequality and poverty. Savage said priests died under the hands of communists. The communists burned churches, destroyed icons and artifacts in Bolshevik Russia. Wherever communism has appeared, the church has suffered. Catholics have suffered terribly, Savage argued. He said Francis is promoting, quote, the same philosophy as the church's persecutors. The talk host warned, oh, beware the enemy within. He's everywhere. He's everywhere now. Catholic Savage said are the ones standing on the front lines between us and this insanity. Just make sure he's not inside your own heart. You have to fortify yourself with knowledge. Knowledge is power. And knowledge is really the only thing you have left against these con men and shysters who would steal your very freedom, said Savage. Savage went on speaking directly to Catholics and others of faith. Never mind your future. I'm talking about your now. They'll steal your now from you. Wait until you see what goes on over the next two days, he said. Wait until you see all of these atheists in Hollywood and in Congress and in the media who laugh at religious people their whole lives, genuflecting and speaking in somber tones about the Pope. And was I wrong? Can you believe it? People who have spit on the church for years love the church. Why would they love the church? Because it's not a church anymore. It's a college classroom of progressivism. Period. Pope has no clothes. Naked Leninist. Read the book. Just read the chapter when you can, when it comes out. Then you got the same day Boehner resigns. That's an interesting one. The day after he finished his mission of bringing the Pope to America to put the final nail in the coffin of thinking people, he resigns. He did his job. What was that about? What is going on? Why would Boehner resign right after he completed his mission? We know that salmon, when they swim upstream, upstream to spawn, they go through great turbulent 
waters and rivers and streams, and they get to the spawning grounds, they spawn, and they die. It's as though Boehner is a salmon who just spawned the progressive values he was put there to spawn, and then he died by leaving the stage. But he's not finished yet. He's got another month. Now that month is the most telling month. You'll see what he's going to do. You wait and see as he pushes for immigration reform. You wait and see when he pushes for uh, these other issues that are so dear to the, to the dear leader. And then you'll see, but you'll never really see, what he gets in return. Wait till you see what he gets in return in his retirement. You'll never know what he gets in his retirement, will you? That's how the game is played. That's what you call corruption. That's what you call the death of a nation. That's what you call the rise and the fall of the American empire. That's what you call what's going on right in front of your eyes. A seamless integration between church and state, both on the same progressive page. Let's go to KVOR Radio. Frank, welcome to the Savage Nation. Your opinion counts. Go ahead, please. I'm a, hi, Dr. Savage. I'm a traditional Catholic answering your call. Um, and thank you, sir, for changing the music to a rock and roll uh, at the beginning of your program. As a traditional Roman Catholic, it saddens me very much that that beautiful prayer that said at every Mass, the Pater Noster, which is the Lord's Prayer, is somehow sullied by its being sung in the same room of this evil heretic. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Are you really a Catholic, Frank? Because you know the Catholics listening are going to say that I, I hired you to say that. No, no, no one hired me to say that. And if anyone who wants to call it, uh, I don't know if you can get three-way conversations here, but I can... No, 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 we don't. No, no, I hear you. I hear you. But you have a main point here up on my screen. I'd like you to state it. It's so well put. Uh, I have a number of things to say to give you some background that you... No, no, wait, wait, wait. You, you, let me read what I see on my screen. Frank from KVR says, Pope's spiritual transformation mirrors our secular transformation. That is quite succinct. And that's what you're saying, Frank, yes? Exactly. And uh, even before Vatican II, the Roman uh, Catholic Church was infiltrated in the seminaries, which produced these uh, liberals and progressive priests, uh, and it's been going on for many generations and decades, if not centuries, to get us to where we are at today. And also, uh, Dr. Savage, it should not be of any surprise to see the parallel in the secular world here in America. Progressively more socialist doctrine in state schools, as, uh, as you know, planned by Horace Mann and John Dewey and others. And yes, I know John Dewey, because I, I was an education minor in my undergrad years, and John Dewey was one of the gods uh, of the education teacher, so-called. Exactly. Listen, stay on the line, Frank. I'm glad that you called, and I'm going to send you a free copy of Government Zero, the minutes available. I hear it's going to be available next week. Not in the stores yet, but it'll be available for me to send out from my fulfillment house. Let's have a little uh, rock and roll as I go to the next caller here in San Francisco. Doug, Doug on KSFO, what's on your mind, Doug? Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Doug. I have two real quick points. I'm a lifelong Catholic, and I have to say I agree with everything that I've heard you say over the last week. I believe in my faith, but I think that I really do think that we have a heretic in the White House. I agree with your last caller, and I don't think he's the only one that fits thinks that way. And my second point, very quickly, I want you to know you cured my mental disorder, quite literally. I hated you and I didn't even know who you were. And then I started listening to you when you went to drive time and you make sense. You stick to your point. You don't switch things up like every other person in the industry. And it really drew me to critical thinking. And I was a diehard liberal, not anymore. Forget it. I've wow. Joker That's amazing. Well, okay, you know, the truth has its own, uh, as Hemingway said, the truth has a certain ring to it, and people will hear it. Well, I'm glad you're able to hear the church bells, because the fact of the matter is, my message has not changed. I'm consistently bored as language and culture. And uh, to me, I don't know, there are no icons, whether it be churchmen or po politicians. I'm not one of those who stand on the radio and glorify the founding fathers either, by the way. Did you personally know the Founding Fathers? Why are so many people so quick to say they were perfect? This is the same kind of idiocy that uh, translates into the Pope as a perfect man. How can you say the Founding Fathers were perfect men? They were slaveholders. 
they were uh, they were kind of dictatorial in many ways. So they wrote a brilliant document called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I respect them for that. But in other ways, they're not perfect. Why hold them up as some kind of demigod? Or well, hold up Ronald Reagan as a demigod? He was no demigod. Demigod. He was somewhat of a demagogue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and I'm not and I and I'm not drinking any eggnog right now. They weren't. So when, when did you convert from liberalism to re, to realism? To, com to be completely honest, I picked up the book uh, Political uh, Zoo from my local library right when you went to drive time. I started listening and things. Oh, started. you're talking about 10 years ago. You're saying 10 years ago. Now, a year ago when I started listening to you, but I picked up a book from 10 years oh, ago. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Wait, hold. Let's start from the top. You mean drive time on the East Coast, but I'm on from noon to three on the West Coast. So where are you listening? On the West Coast? Uh, on the West Coast, correct. Cause I, All right, so, uh, well, this is not really drive time. This is, you know, afternoon, mid, 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 midday or whatever they call it. And the whole reason I'm on in this slot on the, on the West Coast is to make me available on the dry, in drive time on the East Coast where the audience is much larger at that time. But then instead of picking up one of my newer books, you picked up one I wrote 10 years ago called Political Zoo. That's what you're saying, right? See if you were consistent. And your consistencies, you wrote about Bill Clinton. I re by the way, oh my goodness, your your um, <laughs> your allegories to animalism is absolutely hilarious. I have to say, I was laughing out loud when I read through some of that. But the main point is, you stuck to your guns. I wanted to get an old book to see if what you were saying now, as of uh, you know a few months back when you switched, I wanted to see if it was the same message. And unlike a lot of these other jokers in, in the radio industry, you stick to your message. And for me, I'm sorry, but the, uh, no, I'm not sorry. It solicits respect, sir. It solicits respect. Well, I am consistent. Some would say that I am, <laughs> who understand that my message of borders, language, and culture has not changed. And uh, if you'll stay in the line, my dear ex-liberal friend, I'll put you on the list to receive one of the first first printing editions of my most important book, my, my really most important book, Government Zero, coming out next month. That's simple. The time is about seven minutes of the hour. Let's have some rock and roll, Robert. Give me one of the Johnny and Joes or something like that. And uh, Doug will stay in a line and get a copy of the book. I don't like it. It's like love lost. It's going to make a lot of people sad, all the guys out there with child support payments and wives who are mean to them. No, no, no. We can't play Johnny and Joe. The guys will break into tears. Let's give them something. How about Walk Like a Man by Frankie Valli? Now, that, that might wake them up and make them happier on Rock and Roll Friday. Give the men out there who are paying through the nose because of the feminists who took over the courts Walk Like a Man. Now let's go to Buddy Knox with Party Doll. We're doing Rock and Roll Friday. I'd rather hear this than, than sanctimonious uh, speeches anymore today. Buddy Knox and Party Doll is one of my favorite songs. What would you give to be back in junior high school knowing what you know now? Oh, my God. People used to say that to me, and it would be a terrible thing. That's like a freak show, isn't it? Imagine a little 13-year-old kid knowing what an adult man knows. That'd be like a... You'd be like Bill Clinton to Buddy Knox. Party doll? I thought it meant come over, eat candy corn, listen to records. I was an innocent kid. Du hast mich gefragt und ich hab nichts gesagt. Whatever that means. That's, of course, Rammstein you have. So it's a weird day in the savage land. The sanctimony emanating out of New York is overwhelming. It's hard to bear. It was bad enough putting up with Congress and a Hollywood and the media stars who think that they're gods themselves. And now we get this one who actually walks around. And the way they... It wasn't just the speech, by the way. There's a certain way old men walk who think that they're so important... There's a certain shuffle that they do that gets me angry. I never want to walk that way when I'm in my 80s, if I should be lucky enough to get there. Do you know the, the shuffle I'm talking about? Even men in their mid-70s start to take it on when they act very wise and very old and they move in a slowish way. I, I can't quite put words to it yet. I have to think about it. But their very walk disturbs me. It bothers me. There's something unnatural about it. It's, po it's posturing. 855-407-282. Donald Trump is still there. Yeah, oh, he's still talking. Can't get him back on the show, but uh, we understand that he's still running for office. As soon as we hear from his office, we'll let you know. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800 